Let's continue our series in hematology and discuss drug-induced immune-mediated hemolysis. Wow, that was a mouthful. Coming up, Medicosis Perfectionalis here. Immune hemolytic anemia, as you know from previous videos, has three different causes. Autoimmune hemolytic anemia is by far the most common. We have the warm subtype and the cold subtype. Of the warm subtype, please don't forget lupus. Pretty important. Second most common is drug-induced hemolytic anemia, also known as drug-induced immune hemolytic anemia. Please don't say diaiha. So what's the story? You take a drug and this drug will fool your immune system. Now the immune system is confused. Start developing antibodies against the red blood cells. Your own red blood cells against the self and hemolysis will occur, which is never a good idea. So the drugs that cause drug-induced immune hemolytic anemia include, but not limited to, cephalosporins, especially cefotitan and ceftriaxone. Cefotitan is second generation, ceftriaxone is third generation cephalosporins. Penicillin family, and one of the member of the glorious penicillin family is piperacillin. Methyl dopa, quinidine, dapsone, nitrofurantoin, fludarapine. Drug-induced immune hemolytic anemia, most common you will be drug-dependent antibodies. What does this mean? These antibodies are only detected in the presence of the drug. No drug, no antibodies. Also, less commonly drug-independent antibodies, such antibodies do not need drug to be present to obtain in vitro reactions. One of the examples here will be fludarapine, one of the examples here will be penicillin and cephalosporin. We will elaborate on four of these, cephalosporins, penicillins, methyl dopa, and quinidine. Cephalosporins and penicillin are quite similar, so we have three different story. The penicillin story, the methyl dopa story, and quinidine story. Story number one, the great penicillin. Penicillin has a group called BPO or benzyl penicilloil. It acts like a haptin or a baby antigen. This BPO group attached to the red blood cell surface forming a covalent bond. This is called membrane adsorption. Ad means attached to or pretty close, as in adrenal, which is the gland attached to the kidney. This will lead to IgG formation, because this doesn't seem familiar to your body. It seems like an enemy or a foreigner, which will lead to IgG attached to the BPO and the red blood cell. They go nicely to the spleen and getting phagocytosed by the macrophage. Thanks to FC receptor in the macrophage recognizing FC portion of the IgG antibody. What type of hemolysis is that? Extravascular hemolysis. What type of hypersensitivity reaction is that? Type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, which is also known as cyto toxic. As you know, cyto means cell, and I do need the cell or the red blood cell for this process to occur. To be a great student, there are three different scenarios for penicillin. First, patient takes penicillin, immediately develops rash and hypotension. What's that? This is type 1 hypersensitivity reaction, IgE, mast cell or basophil activation, release of histamine, etc. Second scenario, patient takes penicillin, develops hemolysis and jaundice. What's the diagnosis? This is drug-induced immune hemolytic anemia, type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, Cy2 toxic. Third and last scenario, patient takes penicillin, one to two weeks later develops fever, urticaria or rash, arthralgia or joint pain. What's the diagnosis? This is serum sickness-like reaction. Kind of similar to serum sickness reaction in the symptoms, but quite different. And there are two differences between serum sickness and serum sickness-like reaction. First, serum sickness reaction is a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction, but serum sickness-like reaction has an unknown mechanism till this moment. 
Also, serum sickness reaction, there are immune complexes there. But in serum sickness-like reaction, no immune complexes are found. All of this is pretty high yield for your exam. Many students don't get that because they see it's kind of difficult, but now you won't. Story number two, the glorious methyl dopa. Methyl dopa is an antihypertensive drug used especially in pregnancy. What are the other antihypertensive medications that can be given to a pregnant woman? Hydralazine, nifedipine, labetalol. Can we use diuretics in pregnancy? We shouldn't. Why? They can cause volume depletion and compromise the utero-placental blood supply. Can we use ACE and ARBs in pregnancy? No, they can damage the kidney of the baby. Wow, that was a cool pharmacology review there. Back to methyl dopa. Methyl dopa, the drug, will change or alter the RH antigen on the surface of your red blood cell. Now it has a different shape. IgG will recognize that because it's not familiar. This sounds non-self. Attached to it, they go nicely to the spleen. Macrophage will attack them. What's the type of the hemolytic anemia? Extravascular. What's the type of hypersensitivity reaction? Type 2 or the cytotoxic. A great mnemonic to remember that. Type 2 hypersensitivity is cytotoxic. Okay. Story number 3. The quinidine. It's class 1A antiarrhythmic. It increases the action potential duration and prolongs the QT interval. Let's review the antiarrhythmic classes. We have class 1, which is sodium channel blocker, class 2, which is beta blocker, class 3, potassium channel blocker, class 4, calcium channel blocker. And here's a cute little mnemonic to remember the four classes of antiarrhythmic. Sodium, beta blocker, potassium, and calcium channel blocker. You're welcome. Please don't do that. It's just a joke. Okay, quinidine acts like a heptan. IgM, recognize that. IgM and the drug without the red blood cell yet will float nicely inside your blood vessel. This is intravascular. Now the complement will get activated because IgM can fix the complement avidly, leading to complement activation. Now, for the complement to activate, it needs a cell surface. Here comes the red blood cell. Complement will get activated, C5 through C9, the MAC, pour in the red blood cell, disrupt the osmotic environment, which will lead to hemolysis. What kind of hemolysis is that? Intravascular hemolysis. You can regard this process as type 3 hypersensitivity reaction since till this step we didn't need a cell surface, so it's not type 2, it's kind of type 3, but that's okay. Here is the story of extravascular hemolysis. These are the causes, this is the mechanism. We have discussed this before in my video extravascular versus intravascular hemolysis so please go back and watch that video also here is intravascular hemolysis causes mechanism again discussed before symptoms of anemia the same tired pale short of breath hyperdynamic circulation heart murmur angina plus jaundice and urine discoloration huge spleen Skeletal changes? Maybe not. How to diagnose it? Ask the patient about the history. There is a history of drug intake such as penicillin, cephalosporin, methyl dopa, quinidine, etc. Plus some investigation. You know, CBC will give you low hemoglobin, low hematocrit, reticulocytes will be high because this is hemolysis. MCV could be normal, but the reticulocytes could raise the MCV because reticulocytes are bigger than the red blood cell. LDH high, unconjugate bilirubin high, heptoglobin low. How to diagnose it? Direct Coombs test, direct Coombs test, as you know, detects antibodies on the surface of the red blood cell. 
in the urine hemoglobin urea hemosiderinuria especially in cases of intravascular hemolysis as you know drug induced immune hemolytic anemia could be either extravascular or intravascular how to treat drug induced immune hemolytic anemia uh, um, maybe like look at the name drug induced hemolysis so maybe um, i don't know stop the drug okay of course this is the first step don't forget that the drug is causing the problem you take out this drug also you can give prednisone prednisone is anti-inflammatory steroids of course will prevent this process severe cases will need blood transfusion thank you so much for watching this video please consider subscribing and i'm posting questions and answered on facebook so please like me on facebook i'll see you in the next video be safe, stay happy, study hard. Medicosis perfectionalis.